Mind blown. You are a cyborg. Like many of you, I first became familiar with the term cyborg when I saw the Borg in the Star Trek Next Generation episodes. They were cybernetic beings with the hive mind called the Collective, and they would co-opt the technology, knowledge, and other beings by forcibly assimilating them into the Borg by surgical augmentation and injection of nanoprobes into their bodies. In 1960, the term cyborg was coined by Manfred E. Kleins and Nathan S. Klein to refer to the concept of an enhanced human being, born out of the idea that humans will need to intermesh with machines in order to travel to outer space and to survive the hostile environments outside of Earth. Kleins was the chief research scientist in the Dynamic Simulation Laboratory at Rockland State Hospital in New York. Merriam-Webster defines a cyborg as a bionic human, with bionic meaning biological capabilities or performance enhanced by electronic or electromechanical devices, sort of like Lee Majors in The Six Million Dollar Man. Applying technologies into the human body makes a hybrid human-machine cyborg. There are many different types and levels of cyber organization active in our society today. We use biological sources such as viruses, bacteria, and other plants and animals to create vaccinations, perform genetic engineering, create nanobot injections to help us fight various diseases, to treat cancer, and to treat genetic disorders. We've also used xenotransplantation, which is the use of other animal parts, such as heart valves from pigs, to improve, augment, or cure human condition. This is known as biocyborg technology. We also now engage in the implantation of machine devices into the human body to help it function. Such common devices include pacemakers, glucose monitors, drug pumps, hearing aids, artificial hips, artificial knees, and cardiac devices. These are all technological devices that help humans enhance their capabilities. New and emerging biocyborg technology includes the work of William Dobell, who is among the first to restore sight to those with non-congenital blindness, and the work of Gregoire Cortine, a neuroscientist at the EPFL University in Switzerland, where he has restored motor function to a paraplegic named Gert Jan Oskam. This was accomplished by using a combination of muscle and brain implants to route signals from the brain around the injured spine and to the muscles. Another form of cyborg technology involves gene editing. Using tools such as CRISPR technology, we are now able to make changes to people at a molecular DNA level for all sorts of reasons and results, including treatment of genetic disorders and diseases, such as sickle cell anemia. We are therefore able to evolve a person at a genetic level very quickly, in a way that classic Darwinian evolution could never have imagined. In terms of military application, the US Army believes that a range of technologies could be available by 2050 that would effectively turn the average soldier into a cybernetically enhanced super soldier. A recent Department of Defense study predicted that enhanced vision, enhanced hearing, musculature control, and what amounts to telepathy would all become possible within 30 years, given the current pace of technological development. So are you a cyborg? Well, maybe not in all the ways described before, but I want you to consider a thought experiment for a minute. Consider first the hypothetical you living in the 1600s. To communicate with someone, you would either have to speak to them in person or write a letter. To find information, you would need to ask someone or find the information in a book. If you wanted to travel someplace, you could walk, ride a horse, or ride in a horse-drawn carriage. There were no vaccinations to warn off deadly diseases. There were no drugs to cure or help with serious diseases or injuries other than local homeopathy and tradition. To accomplish manual tasks, you either use your physical strength, the strength of animals, or use the assistance of basic mechanical tools, such as ropes and pulleys. Now consider the current you. You mostly wake up and check your smartphone in the mornings for the time and any messages. These messages can come from anyone, from any place around the entire world. You will carry this device all day and be instantly in touch with anyone or any bit of information that you desire to gain from the web. You shower and may take some medicine for things like cholesterol, anxiety, and autoimmune disease, blood pressure, or other condition. In your body, 
you already have cells that have been trained to fight diseases via a score of vaccinations that you have received over your lifetime. You travel to work in your car, which is essentially your customized exoskeleton, which protects you with various features while you travel at high speed to a destination. It also provides comfort and the entertainment you choose. At work, you have other computers to assist you with accessing the entire world of knowledge and communicating with others. There you may also have other equipment that assists you with your job, such as hydraulic equipment, AI-assisted surgical devices, computer-animated virtual reality, night vision goggles, protective gear, 3D printing, etc. After work, you might visit a gym, where you utilize exercise machines to maximize your physical efforts to gain strength and stay healthy. Your wearable device monitors your blood pressure, heart rate, the number of steps you have taken, and the number of calories you have burned. At home, you select whatever movie or show catches your interest, and the temperature of the house automatically adjusts to the settings you programmed. Your security system provides protection as you sleep. Your CPAP machine prevents any sleep apnea and improves the quality of your sleep. You see, you already are a bio and mechanically enhanced human being. Our machines and our technology is an integral part of our life experience. We are cyborgs. It's just a question of degree. And over time, our species will inevitably utilize and rely on these technologies even more. Extrapolate this out a few hundred or a few thousand years, take a guess at what we will be then, and blow your mind. Mind blown. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to have your mind blown daily. It's free, you know.